Come on, church. How's everybody doing this morning? First service, caffeinated, feeling good. Hopefully you got some of that ragged coffee in the lobby. And um, I just want to say hello. I already introduced myself. But again, if, if, if you're like me, you forget a name the first time you hear it. And so uh, my name is Matt, of the honor of serving as the lead pastor. And uh, glad that you're here this morning. We are wrapping up uh, a 10-week Netflix special called Summer Sweet. Come on, it's just been 10 weeks of leaning into the same scripture. And how many people know repetition is the father of learning, right? And so we're learning, we're growing. And we've been in this passage in Galatians chapter 5. And I want to read it just one more time. Come on. But the fruit of the Spirit is love and joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness. Turn to somebody and say, self-control. Woo! Any parents in the house? I remember. Not being a parent. I'm currently a parent. But I remember my parents would be like, you need to control yourself. I almost tired of the message, control yourself, right? Like, you got to. But self-control. Anyways, the spirit, uh, the fruit of the spirit, gentleness, self-control. Against such things, there is no law. And those who belong to Christ Jesus, they have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. Guys, that is an important truth to grab a hold of. Those who have made a decision to follow Jesus have crucified the flesh, its passions, and its desires. Ready? If we live by the Spirit, let us keep in step with the Spirit. Let us not become conceited, provoking one another, or envying one another. Turn to somebody, say, step with the Spirit. Step with the Spirit. This is, this is the emphasis. This is the bottom line. This is what the writer uh, Paul has been trying to emphasize with the fruits of the Spirit. It's like, hey, we have all these fruits of the Spirit, but it's because we step with the Spirit. And uh, we've been having this fruit basket uh, all, all 10 weeks, and we've been going over some different fruits. And if you're just joining us, I'm going to catch you up to 10 weeks, some bottom lines, ready? Uh, all the fruits of the Spirit, they, they come together from the Holy Spirit. So they're, they're, are, they're not character traits that we can get better at in our own ability. They, they are fruit from the Spirit that gets cultivated from the inside out. And if we view them as character traits, then we're going to try to change ourselves from the outside in. But the gospel is that we get changed from the inside out. And so the the Holy Spirit is, it's like an edible arrangement, right? An edible arrangement. I don't know if you've ever had an edible arrangement or even know what that is. But it's a a fruit flower basket. That's the way I can describe it. Uh, It's fruit that they like make look like flowers and then you send it. And then they charge you 400% times. And uh, <laughs> it's a great marketing campaign. It's great. But I'm like, is the fruit extra sweet? Like, I don't know. Let me know if you've ever had one uh, after. But um, it just, it's just, it's edible arrangement. And here's the cool thing about edible arrangements or about fruit in, in, in those moments, those packages, flowers. It's not necessarily just the items. It's who the items come from that make it special. Okay, so, so, so listen to me, because if we leave the Fruit of the Spirit series, it's our last week, thinking that it's all about the fruit, we will miss out on the fact that it's all about the person who gives the fruit. It's about his spirit. And when his spirit comes, there are some things that happen called the fruit. But, but the most important thing about the fruit of the spirit is the name tag and who it comes from. Because, because we always try to focus on the what, but the what is not important, not nearly as important as the who. Who it comes from. The Holy Spirit has an edible arrangement for your life that will change you from the inside out. And I'm telling you, when, when we grasp that concept, it will change the way not only our relationship with God is, but our relationship with each other. I love what Pastor Jason said week two of the series. He said, the the fruit of the Spirit, when it's cultivated in me, is not just for me, it's for you. We we eat of the fruit from a tree, and so if we're trees and we're producing fruit, guess what? My spouse and my kids will reap the benefit of the fruit that grows in my life. 
your coworkers and your boss will reap the fruit that grows in your life. And John 10 says when we're connected to the vine, there's good fruit that comes out. And Jesus says, so stay connected to me and watch how you'll be changed from the inside out. This is why 21 days is so important. And we haven't even started, so I need to, I need to get into where we're going today. This is just the last nine weeks. But today I want to read a passage about self-control, and it's actually found in Matthew chapter 4. I'm going to read about Jesus and the example that he set, but he set an example early in his ministry. He, he, he was baptized, and in this moment in Matthew chapter 4, he's stepping into his call. We, we know that Jesus is God and man. We know he died on the cross and he rose again from the grave, taking all the sin of the world so that we could be made new. Like everything Jesus did is how Paul could write. You've, you're dead to your old self and you've been born again in a new self. But before any of that happened, Jesus went through this moment. And the Bible calls it the temptation of Jesus. How many people know we need some self-control because there's also someone called the tempter. He wants to tempt you. He wants to distract you. He wants to sell you counterfeit fruit, wax fruit. He wants to, he wants to sell you lust instead of love. He, he, if for every single one of these fruit of the Spirit, the enemy, Satan, has a wax fruit of his spirit. He wants to tempt us away, and the good news is Jesus already defeated the tempter. We're going to read that in verse 1. It says, then Jesus was led up by the Spirit. By who? By the Spirit. Jesus was led up by the Spirit, because in order to have the fruit of the Spirit and to carry the fruit of the Spirit, we've got to walk with the Spirit. So he was led by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by who? The devil. And after fasting 40 days and 40 nights, he was hungry. Amen. That's just factual, right? He fasted 40 days and 40 nights. What does that mean? That means, that means he only had water, if, if that, for 40 days and 40 nights. And it says he was hungry. And the tempter came and they said to him, if you are the son of God, command these stones to become loaves of bread. And Jesus responded, It is written, may you not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. Then the devil took him to the holy city, and he set him on the pinnacle of the temple. And he said, if you're the son of God, throw yourself down. Ready? For it is written. Satan knows scripture, y'all. And he actually quotes a verse out of Deuteronomy. The tempter tempts Jesus with God's word. He did the same thing in the garden, and he could do the same thing to us. See, the first temptation, Jesus responds with the word of God. And the second temptation, so does Satan. He says, if you are the son of God, throw yourself down, because it is written, as you had said, he will command the angels concerning you, and on their hands they will bear you up, lest you strike your foot against a stone. See, a lot of people think Jesus is weak because he was fasting for 40 days and 40 nights. He wasn't weak. He was more in step with the Spirit after 40 days and 40 nights. And so this moment, he says, hey, the Scripture says that you won't, your foot wouldn't even strike a stone. Jesus said, again, it is written, you shall not put the Lord your God to the test. Jesus responds, to a scripture misinterpreted with a scripture in the right context. And the devil took him to the very high mountain, and he showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their glory. And he said to him, all of these things I will give you if you fall down and worship me. And Jesus said to him, be gone, Satan, for it is written, you shall worship the Lord your God, and him only shall you serve. Then the devil left him, and behold, the angels came, and they were ministering to him. In this moment, Jesus is, is being tempted by the enemy. And how many people know it takes some self-control when you are in front of temptation? I remember in high school when I first started learning about fasting, I'd pick days to fast. And how many people know it was somebody's birthday in second period? <laughs> uh, cupcakes being passed around. I forgot. 
It hadn't even hit lunch yet. I hadn't even hit the point where I was remembering I was fasting to be hungry enough. They just put a cupcake on my desk and I ate it. I got to lunch and went, I was supposed to be fasting. Well, I done messed up now. Might as well eat lunch. (laughs) Try again tomorrow, Jesus. Like, right? Man, come on. Well, hey, if you're taking notes, write this title down. Write this title down. Self-control, ready? Mastery from within. Mastery from within. And let's pray. God, I uh, thank you for your word. I thank you for what you want to do in this place today. And God, I know in my life, and whether we want to admit it or not, we need some self-control. And God, I'm grateful that the truth and the promise of your word says that we have it. It's in us. Your spirit puts it in us. And God, I pray that because it's in us, you would help us get it out of us. All these things, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, gentle, all of them, God. God, that, that would, in, in seasons and in moments, that that would be the fruit that comes out of our lives. God, when we're squeezed, this would be the fruit that comes out of our life. God, help us to have self-control today, not because of our power and strength, but because of yours and what you have done. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. I, uh... Anytime I read that passage about Jesus, there's, there's a tremendous amount of self-control. And, and, and I think if we're not careful in the church, we'll read it and we'll go, well, he's Jesus. He could do that because he's Jesus. I can't do that because I'm not. But the whole premise of this series and what Paul was trying to get into the church in Galatia and what I believe God is speaking to our church today is that greater things we will do in Christ's name than he had done. This is what Jesus told his disciples, and this is the truth of what Paul is telling us today, that we have fruit in our life that comes out. And how many people know when something gets squeezed, when your life has tension, when your life gets frustrating, when, 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 when the numbers don't work and the employment doesn't work and the coworker doesn't work and, and the marriage feels like it's not working and the parenting isn't going how we thought. And when, when life gets squeezed, it reveals the fruit of what we've been cultivating. As I think about self-control, I, I, I was just weighing this tension between, between trying to give you the self-help program that we find in the world about self-control and actually giving you biblical wisdom of what self-control looks like. Because we think self-control is, is behavioral changes. But self-control and the fruit of the Spirit doesn't come from changing our behavior. It comes from changing our belief And our belief will change our behavior. If you don't believe me and you read the Bible, read every moment that Jesus speaks to somebody and he never talks about their behavior until he addresses their belief and then he tells them, go and sin no more. Why? Because the belief will dictate the behavior. He says, hey, um, uh, uh, the woman who's thrown down in front of him, and they draw the line in the sand, and, and he says, hey, yeah, I understand you were caught in, in, in the midst of adultery. Okay, does anyone here judge you? No. Now that you know that grace of God can fall on your life, now go sin no more. He deals with the grace, belief first, and then sends her to change her behaviors. It's, it's, they go together in self-control. I, 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 I don't know if you've ever lost your self-control, but I know I have. <laughs> One time I was driving my car, and um, I lost my self-control and control of the car. I lost all of it, you know, and I was driving, and driving Miss Daisy was in front of me, which is just my key term for, like, you slow. And I was leaving the neighborhood. I was in my young 20s. We had a place that we needed to be that was super important that I don't even really fully remember how important it was. Ain't that always the truth? And we were late, and we were in a rush, and, and I, was, I was driving the speed limit on this back road, slightly 10, 10 over, right? That's the speed limit. So I'm, I'm going to 10 over the speed limit, and I'm, this car slow, 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 slow. And I'm, I'm, like, trying to get past them, and, and I'm like, what are you doing? This is one-lane road, and I'm like, get out of the way. And, and so there was this shoulder that you can turn into this park, and, um, and, and they were getting ready to make a U-turn. So I'm like, perfect. So I went up onto the shoulder to come around them, 
And um, they decided instead of making the U-turn, they wanted to get back into the lane that I was now in. And, and they were, we were looking at each other through the windows, getting closer to each other, going, what is happening right now? Uh, and so I swerved and hit the brakes. Well, my Pontiac Grand Am just skidded through this ditch right in front of this park. And with luck would have it, there's somebody who was visiting the park that instead of parked inside the parking lot for the park, maybe it was full at one time, but it was sure empty when I hit them. <laughs> they parked their Honda Pilot outside of the park on the side of the road, just enough for my car to get right up under this Honda Pilot. And I crushed the hood and, and I was playing a lot of Call of Duty at the time, and that's the best way I could describe it. I just remember looking around my car thinking, this feels like Call of Duty. I, everything feels delayed. My hand is waving in front of me. Like, I'm like, I think I got flashbanged. And, and <laughs> I'm trying to figure out what's happening in the car. And my buddy next to me is kicking the door. And I'm like, what just happened? And what is this white thing in my lap? There's a marshmallow. And it, it's the first accident and only accident I've ever been in with airbags deploying. And I was confused. And I looked at my car and it was total, total, totaled. I got out of my car. My buddy's trying to kick his door open because he's getting claustrophobic and it's not opening because the fender blocked the door and, and he's kicking it. And, and we all get out of the car. And I remember thinking, why are you driving so slow? And I remember my friends going, what is wrong with you? Like you lost control of the vehicle. But the truth is, I lost control of my spirit before I lost control of the vehicle. And when it comes to the fruit of self-control, how many people know when we lose control of our spirit, it doesn't just affect me, but everybody in the car with me. That's why when we have spouts of anger and rage and we yell and we're frustrated and we call it blowing off steam. Yeah, you might have blown off steam, but you just blew hot water onto everybody else. Man, this fruit of self-control is so encouraging because how many people know we need it? We need it. Lost control of the vehicle, lost control of my attitude. Growing up, I had a ton of anger problems. I would just, if I could talk you under a table, I would because it was my defense mechanism for insecurity. We talked about it last week. But the truth of the matter is we lose control. And this is what Proverbs 25 says. Like a city whose walls are broken through is a person who lacks self-control. Like a grand dam who's on the side of the road with airbags deployed is like a person who lacks self-control. Why? Why? Because self-control protects the person. You can, you can turn this verse and say, like a city whose walls are built up strong is a person who carries self-control. There's a barrier. There's, there's, it not only keeps the things from the outside getting in, but the outside stuff getting, or the inside stuff getting out. In Galatians chapter 5 Paul writes this, and it's the start of where the fruit of the Spirit comes from. He said, it is for freedom that Christ has set us free. Stand firm then, and don't let yourselves be burdened again by the yoke of what? Slavery. Stand firm then. This year, God launched us into a vision called Free at Last. And he spoke to our church, and we launched this vision in March, and I haven't brought it back around for a minute, and if you're new, God spoke to us this year that this would be the year where people are able to say, free at last, that God would set you free from habits and hangups and issues that you have walked in maybe for generations and for decades, but God said, no, 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 free at last. Let the people come to me and watch how freedom would come alive in their life. Paul in Galatians 5 is saying there is freedom because of freedom Christ set us free. Stand firm. Don't let yourselves be burdened again, be burdened again by the yoke of slavery. Can I tell you, we have a lot of Christians that don't think they're free. No, no, no. You've been set free when you said yes to Jesus, but you can become burdened again by the yoke of slavery that you were already set free from. Christ is saying, no, no, no. Free at last. And some of us will look at self-control and think self-control isn't freedom. 
Why? Because we live in a culture in a day and age where freedom is whatever I want to do, whenever I want to do it, however I want to do it. That's not freedom. Think about if every time you felt and thought and wanted, you acted on it. That's not freedom. Do you know how many people would not like me today if I thought and said and acted on every impulse and thought and declared, well, it's because I'm free to do what I want. That's not freedom. No, no, no. Self-control is freedom. Self-control doesn't limit my freedom. It's a signal that I'm actually free. Self-control doesn't limit my freedom. It's a signal that I'm actually free. How do you know? Well, because I understand what they said to you. I know they walked by your office, and I heard what they said, and it was an improper comment. But if you are not free, you will spout off whatever you think of. But when you have self-control, freedom means I have the choice to think better, to say better, to act better. Freedom comes with the fact that I have control or the opportunity to choose something other than my auto response. Self-control isn't isn't limiting my freedom. It's actually the signal that you have it, that we have it. Like, has anybody ever lost control? I know you're not going to shout right now. I'm not asking you to. Like, that's me, pastor. Let's go. I lost control and I yelled and I know we're not going to do that, but can we just be honest with ourselves in our own seat for a minute? Yeah, I've, I've, I've acted on things maybe I shouldn't have. I've said things maybe I shouldn't have. Well, the good news is that the Spirit has this signal, has this fruit that will change your life. That's called self-control. And when we connect to Jesus, when we connect to his spirit, I'm telling you, something changes on the inside of us that you can't fully explain with words. But I've watched people, and, I've, I, and, and I've, I've shared with people, like, man, I used to be so angry, and, and I'd just yell at people, and I'd get in their face. And, and, and I'd, I mean, in high school, I was telling the interns this last week, in high school, uh, I, 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 I put on some size because I started working out. And um, I remember I would walk in a straight line and watch people get out of my way. Like, how prideful is that? But I would walk, I would walk in a straight line and watch people get out of my way because, because I, 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 f- I needed to feel this superiority or this, like, I, so I, I share those stories. And people are like, there's no way, man. Like, I, you making that up. And I'm like, no, it's because who I am now is not who I used to be. The old me is gone, and the new has come, and I look back at my old life, and I look at the new one that Christ has given me, and even I don't get it. Is anybody grateful for a God that changes who you used to be and works something on the inside of you and makes you something new? Like, this is good news for people. Like, I'm not who I used to be. I don't have to identify with my old angry self. Like, Jesus has made me new. There's this fruit of self-control that I didn't think would actually come out of my life, but I I see it there. What does that mean? What is this fruit of the Spirit and self-control as we close out this series? What does it mean? If you write this thought down, I will walk with what I'm led by. Listen to me. I will walk with what I'm led by. Verse 3 says, the tempter came to him, and he said, if you are the son of God, then tell these stones to become bread. Jesus said, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of God. That's actually Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 3. Jesus said, uses the Old Testament to combat Satan here. Satan comes to tempt him. Why? Because it says Jesus was hungry. And so the tempter comes and says, I see that you're hungry. What if you made this stone bread? Come on, anybody love hot bread? Like Panera? You know? 
It's fantastic. $40 lunches. And then if you go to, I eat out a lot, y'all. I, I just know these places. And um, Krispy Kreme, come on. Krispy Kreme, a little hot and fresh and ready, baby. It's, I mean, I picture Satan like turning on the sign of a Krispy Kreme store. And looking at Jesus like, huh? Huh? And God's like, man does not live on bread alone. You know, like, I don't need your Krispy Kreme. Why? Because what I'm going to follow, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to walk with what I'm led by. Did you know that there's all these things that try to lead you? Sin will try to lead you. The good news of the gospel is, is it, Scripture says we were born into sin. The good news of the gospel is that Jesus sets us free from, from sin. Sets us free from it. It doesn't mean sin doesn't try to still get to you. So Jesus will cut sin from you, but sin will still show up at your door and knock on the front door and ask you to come in. And here's what happens. We have old habits. We have old thoughts, old desires. And because we're used to our old ways, we'll let sin in when we were already set free. And so in this moment, Jesus is going to show us that he is the only way to completely defeat all the things that try to lead us so that Paul can write in Galatians, we walk by the Spirit. It says that, that he, he had a conversation with him and he said, hey, why don't you try to turn this into bread? Are you ready? Here's the things that try to lead us. They're all in the Old Testament. They're in the New Testament. They, they, they exist. We did a whole series on it. But these are the things that try to lead us. Are you ready? My appetite. My appetite. My appetite will try to lead me. That's why the Krispy Kreme sign is so attractive. Because the appetite will try to lead you. And here's the truth. The appetite that tries to lead you, Old Testament, they call it the spirit of Asherah. In the New Testament, they call it the lust of the flesh or the desires of our body. It's, it's, it's as simple as, as self-control is, is saying no to an Oreo or no to an affair. It's it's an appetite. It's, a, it's, I don't even know. I just kind of want it, and I just want to go this direction. And it, but self-control is the fruit of the Spirit. And when we walk with the Spirit, it comes out of us, and it goes, I'm going to say no to the Oreo today, sir. I'm going to say no to the affair. I'm going to say no to the gossip. I'm going to say no to the flirting. I'm going to say no to the phone number. I'm going to say no to the website, I'm going to say no, Self, self-control. Well, how do you know you're free? Well, you can say no to things that your flesh would say, go for it. Your appetite, your appetite is trying to lead you. Look, I, I have this thing in here. Because whatever we hook to, we're led by. And so, and so what happens is we might have an appetite We might have an, an appetite. And I'm, a, I'm, a ta- I'm, being let, I'm being attached to my appetite. Here's what we think freedom is. Well, I can tell my appetite what to do. But the truth of the matter of sin is that this baby will drag you through the mud. And it might feel small to you because it's an Oreo or it's a text or it's a conversation or a phone number. It's a conversation about somebody that they weren't here, and I feel a little bit about it because I think it's gossip. But, and, and, and our appetite, our appetite will try to lead us. And what Satan used to try to tempt Jesus was his appetite. He said, I bet you're hungry right now. He said, he said yeah, I am. That's not coming off. So, <laughs> he said, well, why don't you make it some bread? Okay. Jesus says, no, no, no. We don't live on bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of God. You want to know how to, how to get self-control? We've been saying it for 10 weeks. 
spend time with God in his word and watch how it changes your life. Jesus, every time Satan was tempting Jesus, his response was, the word says, the word says, the word says. Even when Satan tried to use the word, Jesus knew more of the word in the right context to say, you're trying to misconstrue that verse. And the word also says, why? Because sometimes the enemy will use half of a word. That's why Jesus says, yeah, but the word also says. See, I don't know just part of it. I don't know just the ones that I like. I don't just look up the verses that are, that are important to me at the time to try to, to try to do what I want to do. Anybody ever uh, follow my appetite? Let me find some verses that'll prove why this is okay. Your appetite will try to lead you, but I'm telling you, your appetite will try to lead you towards destruction and death. We just don't see it yet. Here's another thing that tries to lead us. I don't know about you, but it tries to lead me. My emotions. I'm not very emotional. I'm extremely emotional. I mean, I'm just an emotional person. I yell when the Bucks win, and I get excited when my friends win, and I cry. But my emotions are, are terrible leaders. Terrible leaders. If I let my emotions lead... Where would they lead me? Jesus, in the Old Testament, they call it Baal, but Satan tries to tempt Jesus' emotions. He says, if you are the son of God, verse 6, throw yourself down, for it is written, he will command his angels concerning you, and they will lift, up, they will lift you up in the hand so that they will not strike your foot against a stone. And Jesus said to him, it is also written, don't put the Lord your God to the test. Can I, can, I, can I explain what just happened here in the basics of context? Satan goes, prove yourself. Can I speak to some men? Because I remember growing up my entire teenage life, somebody would say, you can't jump over that fire. And I'd be like, watch me. Watch me jump over that fire. And do a spin so it's fancy. I... I proved myself. My emotions wanted to prove themselves. I remember one time we were at a water park and they had like a little limbo stick. And, and they were like, I, let's see who can jump the highest. And I was like, I can. And we just kept moving this little limbo. We kept jumping over. We did the reverse. We kept jumping over the limbo stick. I felt so proud of myself knowing that I could jump over it. Why? Because my emotions were leading me to prove myself to everybody. But Jesus said, no, 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 no. I don't need to prove myself to you because it also says, don't put the Lord your God to the test. So yeah, our, our, our emotions will try to lead us. Our appetite will try to lead us. Here's the third one, ready? My eyes will try to lead me. Paul wrote that it's the lust of the eyes. The Old Testament called it the spirit of mammon. It's, it's, it's part of greed. I, I, I need more, I want more. If, if I had more, then, then things would be better. Things, things would feel better if I had more sleep than if I had less sleep. It, it would be awesome if we had more money. Come on, somebody. But budgets don't work on more money. Budgets work on how much money do you actually need? Do you even know the number? Self-control knows the number. Being led by our eyes says we need more. Being led by stewardship says we are content with what we have and we know what we need. There's, there's a difference. And, and, and so he tries to lead him with his eyes because he tells him, hey, uh, again, the devil took him to a high mountain. He said, look at all these kingdoms. Look at this world and its splendor. I will give you all of these things if you bow down and worship me. And Jesus says, get away from me, Satan. It is also written, worship the Lord your God and serve him only. We can be led by the appetite. We can be led by emotions. We could be led by the eyes. And ready? We have another option. There's a fourth option. We can be led by his spirit. We can be led by his spirit. 
Galatians 5, 16. But I say, walk by the Spirit. And you, and you fulfill what? What is the whole point of the fruit of the Spirit? Is that there is a Spirit that has sent you a basket that will open up in your life, that will come out of your life and through your life and into others because we are led by the Spirit. What does it look like to be led by the Spirit? Where's Drew? He around here somewhere. Drew, come up here. Run. Okay. Hey, come on. Let's give it up for Drew. <laughs> Drew's a good friend of mine. Here. Stand on this side of me. And then hook that to you. I don't know. We might be up here for the rest of the service together. <laughs> okay. Here's the truth. We're all connected to something. The Bible calls us sheep. Jesus says they looked on them because they were like sheep without a shepherd. That means we follow something. Some of us follow our appetite. Some of us follow our emotions. Some of us follow somebody else. So God already knows we were wired and designed and created in his image, but we were also wired, designed, and created to follow. We're, 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 we're led. And I can be led by my emotions, and I can be led by my appetite, and I can be led by my eyes, or I can be led by his spirit. Can you be the spirit? You're going to be the spirit. I can be led by his spirit. And what does it mean to be led by his spirit? That means we connect it. So we're going to, will you come with me over here? Okay. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Okay. So spirit, he's doing good though. That was good. The spirits connect, we're connected. We walk together. The, but the spirit also leads me. That's why he's pulling on the thing. You know, I'm break my belt loop. Hold on. And so... <laughs> It's because if I'm like, Krispy Kreme, he's going to go, hey, let's chat for a second. You sure you want to do this? And here's the truth about freedom. It's not that the Holy Spirit replaces sin. Sin was a taskmaster over your life. Well, guess what? The Holy Spirit doesn't come and lord over you. He's a companion. He's a gentleman. He will work. It says you walk with. He doesn't lord over. You really want to do the Krispy Kreme? I do. I don't think it's going to be good for you. I know. It's your decision. Well, what's your advice? Don't do it. I'm going to do it anyways. This is how some of us live our lives. And this is what it means by grieving the Spirit. The Spirit is leading us. And what happens in our life is when we have the Spirit, the Spirit begins to have a conversation with us and say things like, I don't know if you should eat that. I don't know if you should go there. I don't know if you should listen to this. I don't know if you caught on to all these things that the world is trying to throw at you. I don't know if I text her back. I don't know if I'd answer that DM. I don't know if I would, I would make this profile. I don't know if I would rock this way. The Holy Spirit will go, listen, listen, listen. I'm trying to protect you from all the things that want to lead you towards death. But I won't control you from it. Because the moment the Holy Spirit tries to control me, the Holy Spirit's no longer leading me. Holy Spirit becomes what sin was. And so he won't do it. God didn't control Adam and Eve in the garden. The Holy Spirit ain't going to control you today. But by being submitted, being submitted means our Christian life turns from me telling the Holy Spirit, I want to do this, to me asking the Holy Spirit, what do you want to do today? Where are we headed? Where are we going? What are we going to eat? What are we going to watch? Where are we going to go? Because if we can understand that our Christian life is not me living my life with God, but God leading my life for the purpose and the calling and the perspective and the directive and the direction of where he wants to take me, because I want to go this way, but Holy Spirit knows that that way is the way to go. And so, Holy Spirit, we're going to go this way? That sounds great. I'm going to go with where you're going, because Paul says to walk with the Spirit so that we could be free. Come on, let's give it up for Drew. I don't know. How to, there you go. Perfect. We walk by the Spirit so we won't fulfill the flesh. Self control means that I get to choose who or what will lead me. 
can I, can I, can I, can I show you what the fruit of, the, of self-control looks like? I get to choose who or what will lead me. We all are connected to something. What am I going to connect to today? What's going to lead my life? If you want to walk by the Spirit and practical, here's the first one. Romans 12 says to renew your mind. Walking with the Spirit means to renew your mind. How do you renew your mind? Well, I, I could tell you the things that are shaping our mind. Lots of media tries to shape our mind. Lots of music shapes our I could quote a bunch of lyrics. I used to joke I grew up on Joy FM and Eminem. Like, how you doing? I'm good, bro. I grew up on Joy FM and Eminem, baby. I, I could quote both lyrics. I could quote Lose Yourself and Gratitude. But the Bible says to renew your mind. Why? Well, because if I want my mind to be renewed, Romans 12 says, don't be, tran- don't be conformed, be transformed by renewing your mind. Well, how do you renew your mind? Well, you renew your mind by taking in different things than you used to take in. God's word, I'm telling you, will renew your mind. You may not even understand it, but I'm telling you, when you read it, it bears fruit. If you want to walk with the Spirit, renew your mind. Ready? Here's the second one. Drop old habits. Drop them. Ephesians 4 says, put off your old self. By the way, it says, put off your old self. Again, it's something I do. Why? Because self-control is not something I do without the Spirit. It's not something the Spirit does without me. It's a collaboration effort. Your life should have your name featuring the Holy Spirit. Or the Holy Spirit featuring your name. So we drop the old habits. And ready? If you're going to drop some old ones, Scripture says you can't get rid of old things without replacing them because the old things will come back and you're going to be worse than you were before. So we drop the old habits. Here's the third thing. We pick up new ones. Second Peter says, for this reason, for every effort, supplement your faith. Some of y'all need some creatine. Some of y'all need some vitamin D. Like, we, we need some supplements to our faith because the old habits is what we're used to, but now we need to supplement it with something new. Pick up a new habit. Starting with 21 days of prayer. Show up at 6 a.m. I know you're tired. I'm going to be tired too. We can be tired together with coffee. Oh, here praying. Picking up new habits. And here's the fourth one. Pray. Talk to God. 1 Peter 4, 7 says this, Therefore be of sound mind, self-controlled, and sober in prayer. Sound mind, self-control, and sober in prayer. Self-control, the fruit of the Spirit, cultivated by God in us, through our lives. Not a character trait for us to muscle our way through, but a relationship with a God that loves you, that wants to lead you, and knows what's best for you. Come on, can we pray? Every head bowed, every eye closed. If you're in this place, and I want to pray for two groups of people. We always give an invitation for anybody who would like to make a decision to follow Jesus. Because I'm going to tell you, if you want the fruit of the Spirit, the first thing you need is the Spirit. And Jesus says, nobody comes to the Father except through me. Paul writes it that if we confess with our mouths and believe in our hearts, we would be saved. And so there's not a lot for you to do, but there is a whole lot to believe. And what you believe will dictate how you behave. And today could be the day, whether you're in this place or online, where you're saying, I believe that Jesus died for my sin and rose again from the grave to make me a new creation. I'm done with my old life, and I need a new one. I need this Holy Spirit. I need the fruit. I need some self-control. If that's you today, you're going to have that opportunity. But I believe there's believers in the room that are saying, man, I need to unhitch from some of the things that have been leading my life. And I need to listen and hitch myself to a spirit that wants to lead me towards life. If that's you, you're saying, man, I need to, I need to hitch to the spirit today. I need some self-control today. I, I, just put your hand up, put it right back down because I want to pray for you. Yeah, I see that. And if you need to make a decision to follow Jesus today, right there, wherever you're sitting or wherever you are online, I just want you to put your hand up and put it right back down right now on the count of three. One, two, three. I want to make a decision to follow Jesus. Put that hand up. Put it back down. Anybody in this place and anybody online, we're going to lead you in a prayer moment.
Father, I pray for all of those that are in here today that are saying, God, I need some self-control. I need that fruit to come out of my life. God, I pray that you would use them in a strong and mighty way today. God, I pray that you would fill them, that they would be more aware of your calling and your leading Holy Spirit in their life. God, that you would cultivate the fruit of self-control out of them and that the other people will benefit from what you're doing in their life. God, we need it, we want it, we love it, and we're grateful we have access to it. And so God, let that come out of our life today. And if you made a decision to follow Jesus, just pray this out loud and you believe in your heart and confess with your mouth. The Bible says you would be saved. So just say this, say, Jesus, today I make a decision to follow you. I give you my life. I make you the leader of my life. I believe that you died on the cross and you rose from the grave and that by that I could be made new. And so I give you my past and my present and my future. Make me new from the inside out. In Jesus' name, amen. Hey, thank you for watching our Grow Life Church YouTube channel. Our hope is always to help you better connect to all that God has for you. Subscribe to this channel so you don't miss a thing. Fill out a digital connect card so that we can stay connected with everything that's happening in and through our community. You can also support the mission by giving online as we continue to bring people into a growing relationship with Jesus. Thank you again for watching. We hope to see you soon.